Hello, everyone. Please, can you confirm? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Toby Otolori. I'm here in Seattle, Washington. So I'll say good morning. Thank you for joining us from all over the world. And we are really grateful to have you here. Uh, on today's session, I will be presenting with my colleague, Andrew Mathieu. Um, uh, both of us together will be going over this presentation, how we take the first part of the presentation, and Andrew will do the demo part. So the demo part comes to what comes towards the end and please wait to the end. Um, as usual, there will be a link to the presentation after this is over and you'll be able to view it repeatedly afterwards. There will be a session for question and answer towards the end. Feel free to also uh, post your questions in the chat. There are people on my team, there's Mohit and David, uh, capable hands to help. They will um, provide some of the answers that you may need. And then towards the end, we will take some questions that we think everybody can benefit from. Um, without further ado, I think I will just go straight into the presentation. All right. So today we will be doing a product overview for our Azure DDoS protection and also for our Azure Web Application Firewall. We'll see how these two products work for our security tools in your environment. And then we will take advantage of how we can, of these both services together as a bundle, we will see how we can leverage on the result from one tool by using it in another tool. So the plan is to integrate DDoS Sentinel solution. So we will use our log analytics, look at what's uh, occurring in our log analytics workspace, and then we use Sentinel solution and the WAP label to create an action based on what we found. So the first part of it will be the DDoS response to, um, um, to a DDoS attack, and then we'll use WAF to create an action based on what DDoS has found. That's what we plan to do. So the second part of that is integrating DDoS Sentinel solution with WAF playbook. So the DDoS solution for Microsoft Sentinel will be used. We will look into the firewall playbook and then we'll see how we create action based on what we found. And then that will go through the demo for that, basically doing that. And the reason why we're trying to do this is because specifically we have found new trends and some of the things that have been happening lately is such that when attackers come into your environment, they create a distraction with DDoS attack. So while the DDoS attack is happening, on one hand, there's data theft occurring on layer seven or the other end. So how do we prevent this? How do we reduce surface area attack? How do we you know, get more insight into what's happening in our environment and make sure that we're creating proactive plan ahead of what's going to happen? You know, at half of the time, some of these tools exist, but we have customers reaching out to us that this happened you know, because they were not aware that they can do this. So we are doing everything to sensitize um, every user of our products to make sure that they are taking best advantage of the information available to them. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of attacks are now increasingly being used as a diversion in multi-layer multi -layer attacks. So to safeguard your applications and ensure uninterrupted service availability, we are employing we are employing employing customers to deploy robust security solutions. So Azure as a whole offers powerful security solutions. So you can use your Azure DDoS protection, Azure WAF, Microsoft Sentinel to help you proactively defend your assets against such attacks. There is a blog post as well about everything we're going to be talking about today. So if you have to leave the um, the presentation, there is a link as seen on my screen, but somebody's going to share that in the chat as well. So you can click on it, feel free to read it, try it out on your own, and we also appreciate feedback from you. All right, I'm going to quickly go through Azure DDoS protection overview. I'm going to be uh, talking about the, the different SKUs we have, how they work today. That way, um, I'll be focusing specifically on aspect of this DDoS protection that you're, we're going to need to use in our WAF to create like a chain service so that something happens in DDoS protection, we take the result of that, we pick valuable information from that, and then we create these rules and everything is automated for you. And we use that in the WAF, sorry. All right, what are DDoS attacks? Distribution, uh, uh, denial of, 
of service attacks. This is distributed attack in a way that your resource is overwhelmed because you are having too many requests, too many users trying to get in at the same time. I always use example when I'm, so I take, uh, I teach junior classes. And for those who might not be familiar with this, I always uh, imagine a bottle of, um, of nuts, maybe cashew nuts, peanuts, and when you turn it upside down, everybody, everything wants to go out through a tiny bottle at the same time. That's what happens. You're you're trying to access a a minimal resource with overwhelmingly amount overwhelming amount of requests all at the same time. So and when this happens, it's usually generated by bad actors most of the time. And when this happens, it overwhelms your resources and you can't serve legitimate users. Why should we care about this? Any public IP that's receiving traffic from the internet is susceptible to DDoS attacks. And what happens is you have denial of service, it costs you a lot of money, it overwhelms your resource, your application is taken offline, it could be a distraction for something else, which we're going to see as we go on in this um, webinar. So it's very, very important for our customers to be protected from all fronts. This is also one of the biggest issues for large enterprises. It was, it's one of the easiest things to do. You put, with like $10, you can buy tools online that will generate random traffic from random sources and to bombard your environment, bombard your environment. All right, what is the current trend? Um, recently, we've noticed that so a lot of attacks have been happening. It's increased over the years. It's been over a thousand daily that we mitigate at Microsoft alone. So I always tell my customers, um, what's your plan? Because sometimes I see customers who do not have DDoS protection and they're just relying on the basic infrastructure protection that we have from DDoS attack. Now, the problem with that is what you get from the basic infrastructure plan that you have, it can is not sufficient for everybody's environment in a tailored mode. It's just basically rate limiting. That's what you are having. So while this is good enough to black hole certain attacks, you will still need to be able to set up something that does adaptive tuning that is adapted to your own environment. And also, um, for instance, I always ask my customers, how will you address UDP attack vector when it comes to your environment? Now, this is the type of attack this is, is usually around reflected amplified attacks. Your basic infrastructure is uh, uh, protection is not going to help you against that kind of thing. You need something much more designed for your own environment to make sure that you are protected. So these are trends that we have seen and we have realized that there is no way we can design one custom solution for everybody and also defend our own infrastructure at the same time. So the infrastructure is going to be defended on a minimal rate limiting level, but for your own environment, you are going to need something much more adaptable to the kind of traffic you have, the kind of service you have, the kind of requests that comes into your environment, how often they come. And we're gonna see, how we're gonna use all of this eventually to determine how your environment should uh, be monitored. We also realized that um, we've, we, there's, increasing attack on attacks on healthcare systems. If you're aware, one of the major uh, applications used by healthcare is I think Epic, and now Epic is available with Azure integration. Some of these are medical records, medical operations, some of these applications, as they go into the cloud space now, customers, I mean, uh, the bad actors are increasingly improving the attack that has been sent towards this. So if you work in that kind of environment, you can expect, as you can see in number two here, let me pick up my uh, laser pointer. As you can see, number two here, this is becoming uh, increasingly on an average going forward. From November, it was around about 20 megabyte uh, attacks, and now we can see uh, about 20 going on. Uh, with November on average daily going on, and now we are having about going to about 60. So depending on the kind of environment you have, you can expect this attack, and you can expect it in various forms. It could be TCP flawed, packet anomal uh, anomaly, it could be UDP flawed attack. So expect all these application attacks coming to your environment, and it's not going to stop because the trend is it's going upwards. All right, uh, you can find there's a blog post about, around that as well. You can find more insights about that and what the analyst reviews are saying about this and what everybody as network administrators are expected to do to prevent these kind of attacks. All right. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so 
Azure DDoS Network Protection. So we have two SKUs now that's available. And the first one is the Azure DDoS Network Protection. This is the, uh, the flagship product, and this helps you to, re, to, to create security for public IPs within a virtual network. How does this work? Um, we enable the plan on a virtual network, and every resource that has a public IP within that virtual network will be protected with that plan. So what you have to do is look for the virtual network, enable DDoS on that virtual network, and you don't have to do anything on a singular individual level of your resources. This is the easiest to do. Within a minute or two, you are on and you're actively protecting these public nodes. It also comes with adaptive tuning, which means each of these public nodes depending on how often um, uh, requests are coming. So a, for a node that has like 30,000 requests every hour will have different settings compared to a node that has probably just like 10 requests per hour. Because the one that has 10 requests per hour, in the eventual surge of having 5,000, 1,000 of a sudden, then mitigation is likely to kick in. So mitigation must kick in when there's an anomaly, when there's um, traffic out of scope when something is expected and what is coming in is different from what is being seen the mitigation kicks in we begin to scrub these public ips we begin to check their source origin where are they coming from what's their intention and then we begin to notify on a global edge level so again as we expand and have more data centers and regions all over the world the capacity is increasing so as we are right now we are able to defend against terab terabytes of uh, of of request coming in or packets sorry coming in, so if you take advantage of this on a whole, you um with, within our SLA you are protected against most DDoS attacks coming in to your environment. And when you change this with WAF, you are even creating um a layer three to seven uh, uh protection against volumetric attacks. And number three, you also have visibility to the analytics and metrics. So I tell customers when you Put on your uh, when you enable DDoS in your environment, check for the uh, for the threshold values. So usually at the start, you're going to see maybe 20,000 requests per second. Is uh, 20,000 PPS is where you're starting from, and over the over the years, you will see this value might change because again it's adaptive. So observe that, see what's going on in your environment. We have playbooks, we have workbooks that give you good visual visualization to that effect. Looking at the diagram that we have here, the dotted lines that you see here, that's the virtual network, sorry, the, um, the Azure environment. And in this case, we have a virtual network that is a spoke to my left. I have a central virtual network, which is in the middle, and I have a virtual network to my right. There are different designs you can use. You can say, hey, I want every traffic in my spoke VNet to go through my central VNet before going to the public internet. If you do that, then make sure that this is your VHub, virtual network hub here, and this central one has that DDoS protection. For some customers, they have workloads that needs to go directly to the internet. In that case, on this VNet as well, you might want to enable the DDoS protection. But either way, depending on your architecture, using this, uh, the DDoS network protection, you want to enable that DDoS uh, to protect every public IPs in that in that virtual network. So this DDoS network protection is also integrated with Azure's, um, with our Azure Sentinel, and we make sure that customers have visibility and they can take action, they can take alerts, they can do thing, different things. Uh, uh, you can do different things based on what they are seeing in their environment. You also have DDoS uh, rapid response. So rapid response is how we um, help customers during uh, mitigation. When mitigation starts, you have access to the rapid response team. So basically what they do during that process is to make sure that you do not feel like you're fighting DDoS attack alone. So we hold, we, we work with you hand in hand, make sure that it's mitigated. Um, there are certain services that are provided afterwards, basically customer um, appreciative services or basically how to help you to prevent it uh, in the future, looking at your environment as a whole and giving you uh, recommendations and credits where do you. So that's also part of the advantages of having DDoS network protection. And then uh, finally, the SLA guarantee and cost protection. So you have cost protection, which involves, you know, because it's not your fault that that, attacks happen, that attack happened. So you are being considered for some form of um, credit and I'm sorry, from some, some form of cost protection. All right.
Okay, so the the one I just went over is a DDoS protection plan that caters to the virtual network as a whole. So your virtual network, all the IPs in there, over about 100 IPs in there, up to about 100 IPs are protected. But for some customers, they, they don't need up to 100 IPs in the virtual network. Probably their virtual network just has, say, five or 10. For them, it's not cost effective to use that plan. So what they want to use is something that can cater on the modular node, which is, hey, I only have three or four public IPs. Can I use a, can I have a skew that I won't have to pay for something that can take a capacity of 100 public IPs? So that's why we came up with this skew. And so what this skew does is it's cost effective, it's enterprise grade, and it provides similar service, which is to make sure that you are protected from DDoS attack. And this is how this works. So it's flexible. You can enable it on an individual public IP resource instead of the virtual network. It's also easy to configure and monitor. And there's also integration with Microsoft Defender for Cloud and Sentinel as well. So this is just only different from the uh, network protection. We just if, if just a few differences, but it's uh, designed for customers who do not want to use the virtual network plan that I explained earlier. Uh, this is a screen comparison for DDoS protection. Uh, these are the things that we have. There's active traffic monitoring and there's always on detection for both. There is automatic attack mitigation. Uh, there's application-based mitigation policies, metrics and alerts. This is where you want to view what's going on in your environment. Some customers have a lot. I always tell customers, um, make sure you have an alert system set up. Uh, you provide your text um, phone number or an email to always be notified when mitigation starts because you don't know how long that um, experience is going to be for and you also want to be able to uh, get uh, get in hand with the rapid response team or the you know the support team to make sure that they are aware and you are doing the best things for your environment uh, there's the flow logs which is you know it gives you an idea of what's happening in the environment how the percentages and also you also have uh, policies that tune to your application there's integration with firewall manager as well so if you have azure firewall you can go through azure firewall and see which of your resources are protected um which of your resources are not you have that view and that's you know uh, uh visualization available to you but for digital network protection there's the rapid response support which i mentioned earlier i described what what's about and the cost protection and then also you have WAF discount so if you use WAF today and use DDoS network protection as well within your environment, you're going to have WAF discount because DDoS and um, WAF, they work together in synergy. So there will be um, a good, consider a very considerable percentage discount for you for using WAF as well. Okay, that's for DDoS. Uh, quickly, I'm going to brush through WAF real quick, and then I'll talk about how both of them can be changed together for effective and improved uh, security uh, for your Azure environment. All right. Look at the kind of attacks that we have for our web application, which is basically on the layer seven side. There's like, again, there's the brute force and the volumetric attack. Then there is the application specific type attacks, which is like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, LFI, RFI. Uh, so basically, these are just web exploits that customers, I mean, that's bad actors try to take advantage of, especially when your applications do not take certain um, standards into consideration or they are well-designed, but there's like some like loopholes or certain new attacks are like just, you know, within the attack world are just coming out. How do you prevent such access to your environment? And then there's the malicious bots. We have a couple of um, blog posts about how, how do you classify your bot? How do you um, specify the kind of bot allowed and the kind of bot you don't want in your environment? If you don't want scraper, you don't want crawlers, how do we deny that? You can use your WAF to do all of those things. If you only want like bots that rank or bots for chat, how do we try to you know work around that? What specific markers can we use to identify the kind of bots that we want? We did a couple of examples on that as well. So. WAF is web application firewall. I mean, for lack of a better word, but what it does is basically you have a web application 
and how do you prevent different types of attack, especially the OWASP ones, which are known all over the you know ecosystem. How do you prevent that? Uh, prevent that, and then there's some that might not be available in OWASP today that Microsoft has provided solution for. You can take advantage of the Microsoft Threat Intelligence Teams collaboration with the open source uh, team, and then with our what manager rule sets with our custom rules. These are the things that you can do with WAF. You can do with limiting as well. You can take advantage of this many tools to continue to fine tune your environment to grant access only to legitimate um, requests. So um, I'm gonna. We have different uh, webinars and blog posts that go in in depth with that, but this is focused on how we're gonna use this with DDoS. And we're gonna be focusing on web application attacks alone and how we can make sure that we are protected or at the or at the most reduce our chances of being attacked because again i always tell customers like there is no 100 percent security sometimes you can shoot everybody coming from outside and then somebody from within somebody from within your organization can just come in with a you know infected drive or can actually click on a malicious link can be browsed so you you can do all you can but the most important part is you continue to reduce that surface area to as many to a very very insignificant level as much as possible all right what are our use cases here um our WAF has been designed in a way that you can put different types of workload at the back end you can uh if your workload is currently being accessed by a public ip fqdn url if as a matter of fact if your workload is in third party clouds if it's in if it's on prem wherever it is you can um put them behind the azure application gateway or front door and you can specify and that customers or users can only access those your own link or your applications link via the app gateway or the front door and it's also using WAP is also part of our um zero trust architecture that we tell customers to do we have a depth a security depth that we tell customers to consider and usually involves making sure they have the firewall you know at the edge point they have um app gateway or front door so they can take advantage of WAF make sure they have DDoS make sure their log analytics is set up so we have you know a couple of things that we encourage customers to do for a zero zero trust network architecture so WAF is integrated with front door and app gateway. It protects against OWASP top 10 attacks. It protects against zero day web vulnerabilities using mystic rules. We protect against malicious bots, which are some of the things I've mentioned earlier. So um, you, have, you probably hear some of these things from us before, but we just want to continue to make sure that you are using it the right way. All right. So now how do we take advantage of DDoS Sentinel solution and integrate it, integrate it with WAF playbook. So both DDoS and WAF, they have Sentinel integration, and then we can take advantage of what's going on in Sentinel, what Sentinel is able to see about these mitigations, and then use that to create an action to improve security. What we are trying to do is, first of all, we want to turn on diagnostic settings on App Gateway, and make sure that we and also diagnostic settings for your DDoS protection. So set up your diagnostic setting, make sure that your logs is being saved either to an Azure storage or into your log analytics workspace. And then what do we do with that? What we're to, trying to do here is the DDoS protection will identify two types of um during mitigation. When mitigation starts, your DDoS will begin to look through. Uh, your Sentinel solution is able to look through the logs that have been created due to the mitigation during the attack. And then it tries to identify some IP addresses that generate over 5% of traffic during DDoS attack. So the first thing we're identifying is what are the five what are the five percent of the traffic where this DDoS traffic um, attack is coming from? We identify that. And then we also identify the packets per second threshold. So we identify the IP addresses that generate the maximum traffic rate that is over 10,000 packets per second during that DDoS attack. So let's look at the, the, the modal value of the attack coming in. What is the 
where is the five percent of this traffic coming from and then the traffic that is also creating over ten thousand requests where are they coming from so when you identify these two uh, these two sources what we want to do is we use the sentinel to say okay look at the sources of this uh this attack then put them on a list then use that list to create a custom rule that will be used by WAF to deny that attack because we are like we mentioned earlier we are changing the system together to make sure that we are catching every form of source of diversion. So if somebody is attacking you via DDoS, they are likely going to do the same thing, which is while you are trying to fight the fire with DDoS attack, we are now going to create a different set of attack for the WAF level. So what we're trying to do is if you have just rate limiting set up on your WAF, rate limiting will still permit traffic from some of those sources. Because what rate limiting is doing is I'm not completely denying traffic. I'm just limiting it to a particular number. So if you set your rate limit to be 200 requests per hour, the 200 requests can come from 70% of the DDoS attack that you are mitigating. So if we create an automation that says, hey, those ones that have been identified and confirmed as malicious, block them through this solution, through this automation in WAF, that means you have reduced the percentage or the, the probability of the attack coming from those same similar sources. That way, your rate limiting can take care of the other types of, um, of requests coming from other sources. Because now you have, if you have 100% coming from different places, by taking care of, by using this kind of solution, you can use 60% of your rate limiting to, I mean, um, of your block rule to completely deny the known malicious sources. So that's how this solution is going to come into play. All right, um, almost getting to time. So this is the uh, the playbook that we're going to use. So we have diagnostic logs set up. <clears throat> we have the certain solution for DDoS, able to identify with those two analytic rules I mentioned earlier. And then the Logic App playbook for Sentinel has a source IP address passed from the Sentinel into the custom WAF rule and the custom workflow will deny. So rate limit is not going to be used here. It's a deny rule that will be used. And this is how we get it. It's, it's currently uploaded in uh, our GitHub. And uh, you can take advantage of that. Somebody's going to share that. So it's just one quick deploy. You deploy here and everything's going to, you follow the prompt and you can specify which, where your log ID space is and everything that you need. And you can go from there. So everything I just described is talking in the air. I'm so sorry. This is the schematic of it. So I think it gets clearer from here. Which step one is an actor launches an attack, which is its plan is to create a diversion. So as you can see here, is volume uh, a volumetric attack is being launched here, but this is the main attack that is trying to set. But it's the same attacker, and this is the secondary attack path right here. So the DDoS protection is able to kick into mitigation the moment we have an anomaly. And so once we have outliers coming up like that, and just protection starts. And when this doctor, uh, protection starts, it blocks the attack, it generates logs, and it sends it to the log writing workspace in here. So at number three, the log writing workspace sent logs to Sentinel. Say, okay, there is we have new logs, we have new unwanted friends today, and this is what they look like. This is where five percent of the traffic is coming from, and these are all the traffic coming from this source that have over 10,000 packets per second. So WAF takes that information, look at their origin, creates all the information about that source of these attackers, and it creates, a, uh, in the playbook, it will create a custom rule to block those sources in WAF, and then that's number four, and then it will send it right into Azure WAF, and then WAF, while this attacker is uh, why the attacker is trying to launch the secondary attack, the WAF is already aware of where this information is coming from because of this number four step. And then the secondary attack is blocked by the custom WAF, by the custom rule in WAF. I hope that makes some sense. Um, so you have to throw in a thousand words before the image, but I believe that the image provides more information about what we're trying to do. So uh, I've taken a lot of time, but thank you for being patient with me. and. From here, I will hand over to Andrew, who will do a quick demo of what we have just uh, described. Andrew? Thanks, Toby. Um, I appreciate uh, your presentation. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. I hope everyone can be able to see this. Yep. 
Yes, Andrew. Awesome. awesome. Thank you for the confirmation. Um, so in this second part of this session, we're going to go through a demo. We're going to show you uh, the setup of the solution and now we'll try and bring um, the theory into practice. Um, so we are going to start off with um, just an overview uh, of what we've deployed and how you can utilize this solution um, to protect yourselves. Um, so the basis, the main, um, the main basis of this is to try um, to stop the secondary attacks, uh, as Toby has explained, um, with the initial attack being a volumetric DDoS attack. So the integration of this uh, DDoS central solution and WAF playbook. Uh, we have a powerful solution to be able to stop um, any sorts of secondary attacks uh, that, may came, that might come in through the main uh, DDoS attack. Um, so to begin off with, I'll start um, by displaying uh, my resource group here with a couple of resources. Um, I'll try and explain the setup. Um, so the setup is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have an app service. You can see here the second resource, and this is hosting um our web application our website so we're using this for our demo services this um web service this app service is behind an application gateway um that has a WAF policy on it so our WAF policy in application gateway is this one called uh sexy test uh, WAF policy so and this WAF policy or rather this application gateway is uh, protected by um, Azure DDoS network protection, the IP address of this application gateway. Um, so in this second tab, we see here our sample um, application. We're using this for demo purposes. Of course, in a, in a real-world production, it could be different. Um, but this is our app service, our website. And I just want to confirm that we have DDoS uh, protection that is protecting the public IP address of our application gateway. So here I have um, DDoS protection plan that is already set up. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. Once you set up, um, you navigate to your protected resources and here you're able uh, to add the resources that you want to protect. So in our case, you can see within our DDoS protection plan, uh, if I navigate, um, and a VNet tab here at the top, you can see the virtual network um, where our application gateway resides in. Um, I don't have a file for now, but if I go to application gateway, you'll see our application gateway together with its public IP address. So this uh, Azure DDoS network protection is protecting our public IP address. Uh, conversely, you could also have IP protection protecting this individual uh, public IP address, it still offers uh, the same level of protection as you saw in terms of the comparison uh, when we show the comparison between these two. When I go to my public IP address, um, this is how it looks like. We have the overview here, um, starts with 52, that's the main public IP address, um, but of importance to us is under diagnostic settings, and like we saw, this is extremely important for us to set up um, because these are the logs that are being used um, to, in essence, um, come up with the incidents with the alerts, uh, which are fed to the logic app, and the attacking IP addresses are used uh, in our WAF custom rule. So that cast WAF custom rule actually has a block uh, action, which is going to block um, those source attack IP addresses, um, stopping them from progressing further, uh, infiltrating or even traveling um, horizontally traversing uh, within your VNet, within uh, your application causing the secondary attack. So if I go to the diagnostic settings, I'll just show you here what you've set up. Um, I've enabled logging for these three DDoS um, protection logs, so the notifications, the mitigations, um, the flow logs, and I'm sending these logs to a log analytics workspace. Um, you can see here its name, it's called DDoS uh, WAF LAW log analytics workspace. So these are the logs that are used by the DDoS Sentinel solution uh, based on the analytic rules um, that we have. 
um, based on the threshold. It could be the percentage threshold of the packet per second. And with that, we have automation that sends the attacking uh, IP addresses to a custom uh, waffle, and we'll see how that works um, in a bit later. So we've ensured that we have our DDoS protection plan. We're protecting our application gateway public IP, and we have logging enabled on this public um, IP address. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to launch um, a simulated DDoS attack. And for that, I'm going to use one of the three approved um, Azure uh, DDoS simulation testing partners. It's called Breaking Point Cloud. Um, I had also seen you had put it as one of the simulation partners uh, in the Q&A earlier. So we're going to use this to launch a simulated DDoS attack towards the public IP address of our application gateway, which is protected by Azure DDoS. Uh, it's a TCP SIM flood attack on port 443. So in essence, we are attacking um, our application and we want to be able to protect it with the solution uh, that we're going to install. Um, so the test duration is going to be about 10 minutes or so. Um, test size is 200,000 packets per second with eight source IP addresses. So I'm going to click on start test um, to begin um, the attack and uh, hoping that this is going to go through. So you can see right now it's validating. Um, so this is the first step um, when you're using this simulation partner. It has to do the validation, so it just can start um, the attack. We need to ensure that whatever you're trying to simulate um, to attack has actually uh, been validated. You have control over it. And you can see here, um, if I go to Azure subscriptions, this is where we add the subscriptions um, for us to be able to begin this attack. So this is a control mechanism to ensure, of course, that you just don't go um, starting an attack, which of course we know in most cases is illegal. So we've started the attack towards our public um, IP address. I'm going to let this run um, for a couple of minutes. Uh, but meanwhile, as this continues, um, we are still going to go um, ahead to the next step. So the next thing uh, we want to showcase is the, is the actual uh, DDoS uh, protection solution, Sentinel solution. Um, so this was launched um, early in the year. We already did uh, a couple of, uh, we did a webinar on it, and also we have a blog uh, for it. So in order to install this solution, uh, it's pretty simple. You can go to Marketplace uh, within your Microsoft Sentinel workspace. You can search for Azure DDoS protection. So I'm within a uh, content hub. Uh, we have, we have uh, our solutions and content. And when you search for Azure DDoS, uh, you'll see the Azure DDoS protection. And this is the solution. Here on the right, uh, you can see uh, what it contains. We have our analytic rules. Uh, we have a data connector and we also have a workbook. So once we've installed this solution, in my case, it's already been installed. Um, I'm showcasing the steps um, where you can be able to find it initially. It's pretty simple um, to install. Just click next, uh, finish. Once it's installed, uh, what is of importance to us is the analytics and automation. I'll begin with uh, analytics and you can see this under the configuration section. So these are the two analytic rules um, that we saw during the presentation. Uh, if I expand this here a bit, I don't know if you'd be able to do so, but I'll select one at a time. So I'll begin uh, with the first one. And this analytic rule is to check the percent threshold. Um, and this you can see at the description, it identifies IP addresses that generate over 5% of traffic during a DDoS attack mitigation. And if I was to edit, um, go inside this analytic rule, uh, we can see how actually how it looks like. So we have a description for it on the first page, uh, which is under the general setting. We have the actual uh, rule logic, and here we can see our query, what it is searching for uh, in terms of the percentage threshold. Uh, down here, we can see the query scheduling, and this is um, of importance. Uh, you can set um, in terms of time, how many times you want this query to run. 
you can see in our case, we are running this query every two hours, looking up data from the last six days. So this is adjustable depending on your environment, depending on what and how you want to, to search in terms of the DDoS attacks. Uh, we then have next the incident settings. Um, so this is where you modify, this is where you configure your alerting, uh, your incident responsing. Uh, we have the automated response and you can see here, this is an automated rule. We'll go through this after this. Um, and this automated rule is now attached to our WAF playbook. Um, so this is how um, the first analytic rule looks like. I'm just going to save that quickly. The second one is pretty much similar, but this one looks um, at the traffic rate. Uh, if you have over 10,000 packets per second during uh, a DDoS attack. Again, we has um, a similar configuration. We'll have our rule query. Uh, we'll have the query scheduling. Again, this one is configurable. Um, it's adaptable, customizable, depending on your environment. Our incident settings, um, our automated rule, uh, if you want to use this particular analytic rule. Um, and just to note, you can use either or one of these rules. Um, so this is basically what we have in terms of the analytic rules. So once we've identified, um, we have the analytic rules in place. Uh, the next step is the automation. And this is the one that now links together our DDO Sentinel solution uh, with the WAF playbook. Um, I already have a pre-made, a preset automation rule. Um, it's pretty simple to set up. You'll have the name, you'll have the trigger, uh, when an alert is created, um, and then what are the actions? You want that whenever um, with the analytic rule um, is mitigating has uh, those logs, when an incident is created, we want to activate um, our WAF playbook, which contains the logic app. And this WAF playbook is now going to add the attack, um, the source attack uh, IP addresses to a WAF uh, custom rule blocking them further. So this is what brings um, all of this in um, together. If I move on uh, to the next step, so this is the Azure Adido Sentinel solution. Uh, the next part um, of this is the actual integration with the WAF playbook. So you've seen here, I will have the automation. In terms of the WAF playbook itself, um, it's available in our GitHub repository. Uh, there's a link uh, for this already shared in the Q&A. So again, it's pretty uh, straightforward to set up. Uh, and this you can see uh, even in the description. Um, this is the Logic App Playbook for Sentinel that will add the source IP addresses passed from the Sentinel incident. So in our case, this is being passed from the incidents uh, that are being created by our Dido Sentinel solution. Um, so just click Deploy to Azure. Uh, you need to fill in a couple of parameters here, your resource group, uh, your region, you give it a name. Uh, you also need to have a, a username, and this is the word that will be used to authorize um, this logic app. Um, and then, of course, you have, you'll have your application gateway ID and your Fondo ID. So these are all filled in uh, when you're deploying the WAF uh, playbook. So, once you've deployed it, I'd already done it uh, beforehand. Um, we'll go back to our resource group and we'll see what has been added after that deployment. So you'll see here you have a logic app. In my case, I call it uh, block IP Azure of DDoS and you'll have an API connection. So in order for this to work, you need to authorize this um, API connection. Um, so you'll go to edit uh, API connection You'll authorize it in my case, I'd already done so, and I'd already used um, this uh, email address like you saw. Um, you have a fill for it when you're deploying the playbook. Next, we'll take a look at the logic app itself. Uh, and this is the WAF logic app. I uh, can see already a couple of runs. Um, there's already a run here um, approximately three minutes ago. This must have happened when I started the DDoS attack. So with this um, logic app, you are able to get 
um, the incidents from Sentinel. Um, you are able to add the attacking IP address to our WAF custom rule. I'll quickly show you how um, the logic looks like. Uh, most of it has already been, uh, of course, it's been pre-made. So here we don't really need to change uh, much for it. Um, just to note, um, this works for both WAF in front door and WAF in application gateway. That's what we see here. We have two branch conditions. Uh, we are able to get the attacking IP addresses and add them to a custom rule, um, to a WAF custom rule um, with a block condition. And this works in both. Um, if you don't specify, if you specify front door only, of course, you'll go to front door. If you specify both, and by specify, I mean here, you specify both application gateway and your front door ID where you want this to go. Um, the front door will take precedence. So it's actually going, um, the custom rule is going to be deployed in uh, front door itself. So with this logic, um, we are able to um, create um, uh, um, that, that, that block rule in our WAF custom rule. So in essence, you are blocking um, those attacking IP addresses from doing any further damage uh, or traversing within our environment. Um, also to note, um, in order for us to be able to actually um, use this uh, logic app effectively, we need um, a managed identity. Um, so we need to add a uh, managed identity to the uh, WAF um, on either front door or application gateway, as well as on the application gateway or front door instance itself. Uh, so you can see here, uh, there's a role assignment, um, an identity that I've added with contributor rights um, to be able to query uh, and modify the existing WAF policy via uh, the REST API. So this is also part of the setup, uh, and we've also documented this within um, the blogs. Um, so in this section, we'll take a look um, at some of the DDoS logs. So we did start um, a DDoS, a simulated DDoS attack. Uh, let me go here, seems it's true. Actually, it's just stopped right now. So what I'm going to do, uh, you'll see, you have see here in front of you a couple of um, KQL queries, and this we are using to look at um, the DDoS attacks um, that we've had. I've done a couple of them earlier. Um, here at the top, this is the last one that I did. So the first one you see is the DDoS uh, protection notification. Uh, and this one notifies us um, anytime our public IP address is under attack uh, and the mitigation is over. We also have our DDoS mitigation flow logs. And these logs, uh, they allow us to view um, the drop traffic, any forwarded traffic, uh, and any other attack insights uh, during the active uh, DDoS attack. And here you can see um, a couple of them. Uh, they are towards our destination port 443. This is our public IP address of our application gateway. So you can see that mitigation did indeed kick in. And then we have our mitigation uh, reports and this one will enable us to view uh, aggregated detailed, detailed information uh, on the DDoS attack. So again, we do see here, like if we take a look at the last log, um, you see the type of DDoS attack, it was a TCP scene flood attack. Um, we see the originating source continent. So we're able to view aggregated information um, of the attack, DDoS attack that occurred. So now we've confirmed that indeed our DDoS attack did occur, mitigation um, happened, uh, and we would already integrated with our WAF uh, playbook uh, through the logic app, and we have our DDoS Sentinel solution. Um, so the last thing we'll take a look at in terms of this flow, I'll just go to our WAF policy. So our WAF policy, this is the one I mentioned, protecting our application. Uh, it's in prevention mode. I'm using um, the managed rule sets, and then I'll go to the custom rules. So you can see here, um, before I started this attack, uh, there was no custom rule here. 
but automation has kicked in and our WAF playbook has um, added those attack IP addresses. And if I was to click on this um, custom rule, uh, you can see here the parameters that are here. You have the custom rule name, so it comes by default with Sentinel block IP. Uh, the rule type, this is a match. Uh, we are matching by IP address, and these are the attacker IP addresses. And you can see here, these are actually eight of them, and this correlate correspond to if you remember when I did the attack, we used eight source IPs for the attack. So these are actually the attacking AP addresses from breaking point. So in essence, what we've done, um, we've taken the attacking AP addresses, put them in this custom rule, and this like we saw um, during the presentation, this gives us another layer of security. It provides uh, the ability to stop any further attack. Uh, so this combined uh, with Azure DDoS protection, the Azure DDoS Sentinel solution, together with the automation, the WAF playbook, you get, um, like we mentioned, a powerful solution to stop uh, any further attacks, especially more so today. Uh, they are getting more and more uh, complex, more multi-vector attacks. So you can leverage this solution um, to be able, in your environment, um, to be able to um, to not only stop the DDoS attacks, but also within um, your WAF uh, policy with this block rule. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm seeing we have around five minutes to go, and in case there is maybe a burning question or maybe a question that we didn't address, uh, we can be able to pick it up. Sure, thanks, Andrew. Um, we do have a couple questions uh, that are worth asking. Uh, the first is, how can we check the threshold of DDoS? Like, when will the DDoS trigger? How many requests per second slash minute? Okay, thanks for that. Take that. Okay, go on. Oh, I can take, take that. What you want to? So go ahead, Toby. So, um, so you can find that if you go to your virtual network. I can quickly share my screen because I think this is a question that a lot of customers, uh, a lot of our users tend to ask all the time. So what you can do is you can go to the virtual network. In this case, this is my virtual network here. Because you ensure that your DDoS protection is on, so in this case, mine is enabled. So for public IPs in this VNet, that's where I want to go, the public IP. But in case you don't know which resources are protected, you can come on your web application and then look at your connected services. So this app gateway is in that vnet so this is the only one that's likely going to have a public ip so i can just go to the app gateway itself and then i'll click on this public ip and in this case this is my public ip so the public ip is where the measurements that you're looking for is going to be so in this case if i go to my metrics and this is the public ip of my app gateway and all that, and everything you're looking for is in here so what you want to what your question is is what inbound uh, traffic value triggers my TCP scene, my TCP, and my UDP. And in here, you will see that value. So you can say inbound same packets to trigger DDoS. If I click on that, it will show me it's about 20 kilobits per second. So, uh, so you can see that 20 KS over here. I can create a new chart. Sorry, we're out of time, so I'm trying to <laughs> speak very fast. Then I can do the same thing for inbound TCP to trigger inbound tcp to trigger ddos packets to trigger ddos the same thing now it's 200 now this value might change over time and then do i want to know you do the same thing for udp as well you can see your dp value and then how do i know if i'm under attack you can come and select under ddos attack or not so this is a boolean value it's either zero or one and some of the tests that andrew has been doing that's when it kicked off right here and so zero and when Andrew started bombarding with traffic, it went to one and then when mitigation started, you have all of that information here. I hope that helped a little. Jason? Great, thank you. Um, the next question we have is, do we need, uh, sorry, do we have examples of service providers who perform slash simulate DDoS attacks? Andrew? Please. Yeah, I can take that. Um, so we have three approved simulation partners. Um, the one I use today is called Breaking Point, and then we also have Red Wolf and Red Button. So these are the three ones that are currently approved um, for DDoS simulation attacks. Uh, with Breaking Point, uh, like you saw, 
if you do have an account, um, you subscribe to it, you're able to carry out your simulation attacks um, towards your, your resource to test. For a Red Wolf and Red Bottom, you do know they are able to actually do that um, testing themselves. So uh, depending on, on maybe what you've subscribed to, they can go in, do the attack, do the simulation, and of course give you the results. So that's more of a managed. Um, those two, the last two are more of a managed uh, DDoS simulation uh, partners as opposed to breaking point. Uh, but currently those are the three that we do use for DDoS simulation testing. Great, thank you. Uh, the last question we have is front door WAF has a limit of 100 rules per rule set and a max of 100 rules. Does the solution create multiple rule sets? What's the maximum number of IPs seen for DDoS? Okay, that's a good question. So in terms of the um, custom rules, uh, first of all, this, this WAF playbooks that we use, the Logic Hub, has an improved um, uh, logic to it. So we do remove any uh, duplicate uh, IP addresses that we see. And what happens if there are new um, source attack IP addresses coming in, they're added um, to that custom rule. And this can go up to, uh, to the much, uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, 600 IPs um, as the match condition. Um, so they'll keep being added to that custom rule. Great, thank you. Um, well, that seems to be all the questions we have time for today. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you, Andrew and Toby, for being our guests and for sharing the great information with our community. Also, thank you to the Q&A team who helped us with answering the questions and providing the resourceful information. To all the listeners still on the line, if you're someone who wishes to aid in the production of the world from cyber threats and desire to have a say in shaping our strategies, blueprints, and recommendations, then we invite you to become part of our security community. Together, we can make a global impact. So join us at aka.ms slash security community. This is also where you'll be notified about the upcoming webinars, events, and other announcements. Also, please take a minute to submit your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash Azure NetSec feedback. For those of you who may have additional questions on the topic we just covered or other product related questions, please feel free to raise them on our Microsoft Tech Community discussion space at aka.ms slash ANS community. Thank you all for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.